All right, how's it going, y'all? So Synology in the past few weeks has gone through and announced three different new NAS units that they've got, and I kind of wanted to make a video on them. I'm actually really excited for some of it and really not excited about the other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about that here. All right, and so the three different units are the FS2500, which is a 12 bay flash station, really designed at an entry level flash station unit. Then there is the DS3622XS Plus, which is a 12 bay desktop unit that can be expanded out to 36 drives, so a ton of storage. And it's also really interesting because it's got an out of band management portal and built in two 10 gigabit ethernet ports. And then down here, the DS2422 Plus, which is very similar to the DS3622XS Plus, just scaled down. So it's pretty much the same looking chassis, 12 bays desktop unit. And this is the one I'm actually least excited about. All right, so let's actually start with the stuff we're excited about. So this right here, this FS2500 is something I think a lot of businesses, specifically video production houses, could get a ton of great use out of. So from BH Photo, it's $3,300, which when you look at the parts is actually pretty expensive for what you get. But when you look at the actual capabilities, this throughput, so almost 180,000 4K random reads and 83,000 4K random writes is a very, very, very impressive for a unit. And it's already got your built-in dual 10 gig connection, which is pretty great start. So one thing I am kind of disappointed by is the fact that it, go, it can only go up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, which for flash station is not that much. But for a starter unit, this is really good. So where I really see this is basically VM storage or for video production houses who need to have a bunch of editors all hitting the thing at the exact same time because you can stick a 25 gig NIC in this. And so this unit can actually go through and pretty much saturate two 25 gig NICs in terms of reads. And so it can read 4.7 gigabytes of data per second across the network. And so to me, that is a great implementation for a video production house. So if you have a ton of editors who all need access to a huge array of footage, this is going to be an awesome unit. You can get eight terabyte SSDs and fill this thing up and absolutely crunch through it for a fairly cheap price compared to what you would pay elsewhere. Now, the one downside of this unit is under the specs, and this is a downside with all of Synology's rack-mounted multiple power slide units, is this noise level. This is deafening. 57 decibels is insanely loud. It is not something you can have even in a closet. Like, it is something that is going to be screaming at you. But if you look at other comparable NASAs, like a normal desktop NAS for them is 25 decibels. And those are the ones that are dead silent. And so these are so loud and that really limits where you can put them. And that, that is the biggest downside. I am hopefully gonna get a unit and test it out, but that's probably its biggest downside other than the RAM limitations. It also is cool because it's now one of the units that can handle deduplication and so this could also be a great office file server where maybe you're used to people just duplicating data left and right. And these things can honestly have three to one deduplication ratios depending on how the file system works and things like that. So that is a nice feature if you need it. And it's only supported on the flash models because those metadata lookups just take too much. All right, and so now onto the DS. 3622XS Plus. All right, so this DS3622XS Plus is actually a unit I'm really excited for, primarily because of its form factor. So it is giving that XS Plus capability. So that's stuff like insane horsepower in the hood, 200 terabyte volumes, and just a lot of flexibility to run a lot of stuff on here in a desktop form factor while being able to fill this thing up with an insane amount of storage. So let's say you're running this thing full with 16 terabyte hard drives in a RAID 6 array. That's 106 terabytes of data that all fits on your desk and it's dead silent. That is one of the best capabilities of these machines is it just gives you the flexibility to have so much freaking data all while still being very quiet, which is something that's really important in offices. 
So this honestly could be an even better editing rig for people. So when you're video editing, it does really help to have laid on SSDs because those random reads are so much better. So that's when you're scrubbing through the timeline. But if you fit this out with a card with two like four terabyte NVMe SSDs in a read only configuration, that's eight terabytes of NVMe speed that you can get, which will pretty much cache your entire project, which this could be an absolute video production house's dream. You could easily have maybe 10 editors off of this thing and it's already got the two 10 gigabit connections on there. And so it'd be really easy to have a lot of people hitting this thing and really have everybody able to have the shared repository of footage. This thing is awesome because it's also expandable out to 36 hard drives. So you can pretty much hook up two identical one of these that aren't actually NASA's but all also have 12 drives in them and just give yourself so much storage. One thing to note, you do have a maximum single volume limitation of 200 terabytes with this one. So you would just have to set up those up all as different volumes, but that's really not a big deal. Most people do not need more than 200 terabytes of data in a single volume. And it does get a little bit slower there and a little less stable, which is I think why they limit it. This is also the unit that comes with the first out of band management port. And so it's actually got the ability to have out of band management. And so right here, you can see it's got this out of band management port. And what that does is this is an entirely separate, essentially computer within the NAS. So imagine if you had like a small, pretty much Raspberry Pi powered machine within the NAS that could communicate with the machine, even if it was off. And so this out of band management never gets turned off. And so when the NAS is shut down, it stays on and can do things like power it up. And so even if the NAS is unresponsive for whatever reason, you can use the out of band management port to actually reboot the NAS without actually physically having access to the NAS itself. It's definitely an enterprise feature, but it is something that is really important if you need that. Now, one thing I would have liked to see on this unit is actually two PCIe cards rather than the two 10 gig connections on there. I just like the ability to add in multiple cards. So if they had either given us two PCIe slots or at least NVMe slots on here, I would have been a little bit happier. But for most people, and I think Synology does tend to shy away from M.2 NVMe SSD caching on enterprise units, because I do think it is less stable. I think that's why they've been doing it, because if you look at their units, none of their enterprise ones have the M.2 caches on there. So I really think that that is something they're worried about. And so I think that's why they don't have them. At least that's all I can gather but you can put a 25 gig networking card in this thing and literally download at 4.7 gigabytes of data per second if you utilize it to its max, which is absolutely insane and could handle such a workflow for whatever you need it for. So it's a great setup and I really think that a lot of offices who have a lot of NAS need, really video production places, but don't necessarily have a server rack will go for this unit because also it is so quiet. It is 25 decibels. That is pretty much dead silent. That is the thing where you have to listen to hear it. And finally, there is the unit that I am not excited about. So the unit I am not excited about is the DS2422 Plus. And I'm gonna talk about why. So this unit right here is for $1,900, you get 12 bays of storage, right? The problem is they handicapped it in a couple of different ways. So they gave it the exact same CPU that's in the DS1621 Plus and the DS1821 Plus. That's actually a fine CPU. It's a very powerful CPU and I've seen it be able to handle two 10 gigabit connections while sleeping. It's awesome. But they really handicapped this in a few different ways. The first and the one I get is the fact that this one is limited to 108 terabytes of data. So a single volume cannot exceed 108 terabytes. The problem with that is, if you fill this thing up with 12 16 terabyte drives and put in a RAID 6 configuration, you're at 160 terabytes. That is 50% over what the maximum capacity of this thing is per volume. And that is just annoying, and that is something that I wish they would allow you to do. It is a larger unit for a reason. You should be able to fill that up. That's the first time that you really run into that volume limitation with a normal workflow. And so maybe there is a use case for it where you've got 
the drive split up to do different things. So maybe you have two SSDs in there to be storage for virtual machines. So knowledge is really good for that. Then maybe another two or three drives for surveillance station. And so with surveillance station, with security cameras, you tend to not want to have your surveillance cameras running on your same main volume, just because it can really slow you down if you've got a lot of people hitting it and you've got a bunch of security cameras going through. But then the other thing that drives me crazy about this and kind of is Synology taking a step too far in my opinion, is this unit also has the limitation on which drives you can put in it. So it's not an actual limitation. And actually all three of the units I'm talking about today require you to use Synology drives. It doesn't say it requires you to use Synology drives. It just says you have to get compatible hard drives. But if we go through and check it out, device compatibility list. Let's just check out 24, 20, 24, 22 plus. And we'll look at what hard drives it's got. Oh, look, all made by Synology, except for this. Oh, look, it's four terabytes. That's not useful for anyone. They just put that in there. I wish they honestly didn't put it in there because they just put it in there to say it's not just Synology's. And the problem is the fact that back here, it is still a plus normal standard unit. I'm fine with them doing that on their enterprise models. Do that on the XS series, but don't do it on these series. These are the series that are for small offices and people who just need a NAS. So this actually bit me in the butt. So funny enough, the day that this got announced, like two hours before it, I emailed a client, Two Choices, who's got a large amount of video for his company. And I said, okay, you can either get the 1821 plus if you want eight bays, or they've also got this, which is the 2419 plus. And so I sent him that. Then they announced it three hours later. And so when he goes to buy it, he actually buys this unit because, oh, it's the newer version. So then he gets it and he goes to migrate all of his data in. And now it says, warning, this volume is critical because he's not using Synology compatible hard drives. And so that is just something that rubs me the wrong way. And when they said, okay, this is just for enterprise, I was okay with that. But for these units, these plus units, that should not be on there. It is one of those things that just causes way more harm than good and really turns away smaller users. The thing is you need an upgrade path, especially when you consider there's also the XS plus version of this model have the limitation beyond that. And so that was one thing that really caused me to say, you know what, I'm not gonna be able to recommend this unit because of those issues. I'm fine recommending the XS Plus model with it because that is such an enterprise unit. That is an enterprise unit where, yeah, let Synology make their extra money on their end. And there is legitimate reason for, make sure there's compatibility on this. But for people who want to be able to just grow a large volume, you should not have that limitation. And though you technically can keep running with it, it always says your volume is critical and it's just gonna cause issues down the line. So that's one really big issue I have with this, especially considering how they handicapped it in a lot of ways. This unit, I really don't know who's gonna buy it because it's got those limitations and it's really quite expensive. If we look at a DS1821 Plus, it is $1,000 cheaper does not have that limitation, has the same CPU and only four less bays. So you could get that and the five bay expansion for cheaper. And that's why I really just can't recommend that unit. All the other units I'm very excited for, except for the DS2422 Plus. All right, well that's gonna be it for this overview. Go and leave any other Synologies you want me to check out in the comments below and have a good one, bye.